I will the engine. Look, there he is, standing by the platform at Laniog. And there's his friend, Bluebell the donkey, in her private carriage. They go round a lot together, those two. I wonder where Jones the steam and dye station are. Or perhaps they're in the office. Oh, yes, so they are. And who's that other gentleman in a top hat? Oh, yes, that's Mr. Williams, the head office. Oh, very posh he is. Managing director of the Merioneth and Lanticilly Rail Traction Company Limited. Well, there you are, gentlemen, I'm afraid. That is the situation. My directors are concerned at the loss of revenue and are proposing to sell the railway to the Welsh National Railway Commission. Oh, yes, well, we understand that, Mr Williams, but, but what does it mean exactly to us? I mean, what will happen to us? Oh, nothing very serious. You'll have to keep to the timetables and follow the regulations. I don't suppose they'll want you to go carting round donkeys in special trucks for no reason. But, but that's Bluebell. Yes, and I expect you'll have to issue tickets and work regular hours. And, you know, carry on like a branch line of the National Railways, which is what you'll be, after all. But what about Ivor? I don't know what they'll do about the engine. I believe they're thinking of using diesel engines, so I expect they'll send him down to Pontypool Roads for shunting at the yard. Oh, but Ivor would hate that. He hates shunting. And the choir, they couldn't do without him. Yes, well, well, well I, I dare say there's a choir at Pontypool Roads, but uh, I, I don't know. Uh, the point is, the railway isn't run just for your engine's convenience. It has to make money. Oh, yes. Well, we appreciate that, Mr Williams. Yes, well, there you are. That's the bad news. Now I, I must be getting back to Merioneth. Uh, I thought I'd like to come over and tell you about it myself. You know, we're just as sorry about it as you are, but there it is. Oh, well, thank you anyway, Mr Williams. Uh, it was good of you to come. And Mr Williams got into his Rolls-Royce motor car and was driven away. Oh, Di, there's terrible news. Oh, I don't know how I shall ever break it to Ivor or Bluebell. Oh, well, it hasn't happened yet, Jones. Look, you'd better take these new boots up to Mr Dinwiddie. Oh, well, I'd better be off. Oh, come on, Ivor, it's time for work. <laughs> That was sad news, wasn't it? Jones and Ivor went up the line to Dinwiddie the gold miner's pit and told him about the railway being sold. But Jonesbach, if the railway is up for sale, why don't we buy it? Oh, don't be daft, Mr Dinwiddie. Where would we find the money to buy the railway? It would cost thousands and thousands of pounds. Well, I, I don't know. What you can buy depends on what you've got, doesn't it? Well, yes, but what have you got? That's the question. Look, come inside here a minute. <clears throat> see, see these cupboards? Well, look inside. Oh, what's this stuff? Dirty yellow metal in blocks. Well, that's no good for anything. What's it made of? Well, what do you think? Oh, I don't know. Well, it's gold, of course, you stupid. Gold? Yes, and here, and here, and here, and in here. It's gold. And under the table there, stocks of it. How did you get all this gold? Well, I dug it out of the hill and melted it down. How do you think? You could buy the railway with that lot. You must have tons of it here. I could buy the whole of Wales, England and Scotland as well. And you would buy the railway just so that we could go on as usual? Well, what's the use of having a bit of money put by if you can't help your friends, eh? Yes, of course, I'd be glad to. Oh, Mr Dinwiddie, come down to Lanyog with me. Come and talk to Dye Station. Oh, that's wonderful news. No, 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 no. Don't go off bang, George. Just you wait while I put my new boots on. Oh, and bring one of your dirty lumps of gold with you to show Dye. Oh, he will be excited. Well, I dare say it is gold. In fact, I'm sure it is. But are you quite sure it's the best thing to do about the problem? But of course it is. It's Mr Dinwiddie's gold. He can spend it how he likes. Oh, yes. 
But if he spends any of it, people will come to hear that there's gold in the hill, and you know what'll happen then? Well, what will happen? There'll be a gold rush! What do you mean? Great big machines tearing pieces out of the hill. Noisy, smelly towns growing up all round us. New railways built all over the valley and all over the hills. Oh, oh dear, no. No, I think that's worse. No, no, Mr. Dinwiddie, I think you're right. You better put your old gold back in the hill. Morning, all. Well, you're a glum lot. Have they sold the railway or something? That is correct, Mrs. Porty. What? You're joking. Oh, no, we're not, Mrs. Porty. Mr. Williams, the head office, was here this morning. We're to be a branch line of the Welsh National, and there's to be no carting round donkeys for no reason. And timetables and tickets. And my loop line will be closed. And Ivor will have to go on to shunting at Pontypool Roads. Oh, there's tragedy. Oh, there's terrible news. Oh, Mr. Jones, I don't know what will happen to poor Bluebell. She'll be terribly sad without Ivor. Uh, have you told them? Well, no, I haven't yet, Mrs. Porty. Come on, Jonesbach. Uh, we'll tell them now. Ivor, now listen, I'm afraid I've got bad news for us all. Uh, you see, the railway is going to be a bit different soon, and uh, the Welsh National are going to take over, and uh, you may be put on to some other sort of work. And, of course, it's been nice riding round on the railway with Ivor, but like all these things, it can't go on forever. And Mr Williams did say something about shunting at Pontypool Roads, and, uh, of course, that's not a bad job, and Pontypool's a nice town, really, when you get used to it, and, and oh, Ivor, don't weep. Oh, now, Bluebell, don't be sad. Oh, come on, Ivor. I'll wipe your windows. Uh, Mr. Jones. Oh, yes, Mrs. Porty. Mr. Jones, I am known to be very rich and I'm known to be very silly. Is that right? Well, <laughs> you wouldn't put it quite like that. Uh, unusual would be more polite or, or fanciful, some people say. Right. Well, today I'm going to do the silliest and most expensive thing I ever did. What's that, Mrs. Porty? Have you got a decent carriage on this rotten old railway? Oh, there's not a bad one round the back somewhere. It's black and gold. Well, get it out and dust it. We're going to Marianneth. Marianneth? But that's miles. And to Marianneth they went. It was late afternoon when they arrived at Marianneth Central. Mr Williams was in his office. Oh, I... What's this? A uh, deputation? Are you, Mr. Williams, of the head office? Yes, I am. Who are you? Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. This is Mrs. Porty. Oh, uh, well, do sit down, Mrs. Porty, and your gentleman. Now then, um, what can I do for you? I want to buy the railway. The railway, Mrs. Porty? I want to buy the railway, and I want to buy everything, lock, stock and barrel. Uh, but what are you going to do with it? Well, I'm going to leave it as it is, except that I shall do some of the work, and I'll have none of this sending Ivor off to Pontypool Roads for shunting and leaving my old donkey by herself. And buy it she did, Mrs Porty. Lock, stock and barrel, engine and rolling stock, stations and sheds and signals, the lot. She signed a cheque for, oh, I daren't tell you how much money. And then they all went home.